Hello and welcome to the program, everyone. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. You can join the conversation right now on X. Remember to tag at TVC News NG and use the hashtag Beyond 100 Days. For what it calls the proper execution of ongoing projects programmed in the 2024 Appropriation Act, which are critical for growth and development, the Senate has approved President Tinubu's request for a 1.77 trillion uh, Naira external loan after a voice vote. The approval comes after the Senate Committee on Local and Foreign Debts presented the report of the committee on the request. Recall that President Tinubu wrote the National Assembly requesting approval for a fresh external borrowing plan to partially finance the 9.7 trillion Naira budget deficit for the 2024 fiscal year. And staying in the National Assembly, the House of Representatives has rejected a bill seeking the creation of a six-year single term for the president and state governors. The bill, sponsored by Ikenga Ugochinyere, wants the office of the president, state governors, and chairman of local government councils to be rotated among regions and zones. Also on the bill is a proposition for all elections in the country to be held on a single day. This is not the first time the House will reject such a bill, seeking six-year single term for president and governors. In 2019, a similar bill sponsored by John Ye from Benue State also failed to progress to the second reading. Let's get to our conversation this evening. We're monitoring developments in Finland where pro-Biafran agitator Simon Ekpa has been arrested alongside four other persons over alleged incitement of violence and terrorism financing. The Finnish Central Criminal Police confirmed on its website that the five men were arrested following a request by the National Bureau of Investigation. The police also mentioned that the several claimed Prime Minister Vipov is alleged to have promoted acts of violence against civilians and authorities in the southeastern part of Nigeria. Uh, let's tell you that this is not the first time he will be arrested. In February 2023, Finnish authorities arrested Mr. Ekpa shortly after he threatened to disrupt Nigeria's 2023 general elections. Report has it that um, he was arrested for collecting money for alleged terrorist activities. The pro BF agitator was later released shortly after being questioned by Finnish police. So will he be repatriated to Nigeria at this time? Big question on the show this evening. I'm joined by former director, Department of State Security, Dennis Amakri. He joins me live from the United States. Also joining me, security expert, Olua Femi Aratokwale. He joins me from London. Gentlemen, thank you for joining us on the program. Thank you. All right, let's begin from the U.S. Mr. Macri, Simon Ekpa has been arrested again. But this time... It's happening days before its planned Biafra Declaration Convention in Finland. What do you make of this development? Uh, well, um, thank you for having me. Um, Simon Ekba has been, uh, he has even gone to prison. In 2021, he actually went to prison, you know, for the same reason, you know, spreading terrorist propaganda on social media. And then now he has been arrested again. And um, I think um, what it might, uh, he, I don't know how long he will be kept because in 2003, when he was arrested, he, uh, he was let go after some time, you know. So uh, this time, I don't know if they're going to keep him because it has been a concern for the Nigerian government at the same time also for the Finnish government. You know, although he's a Finnish citizen and uh, he's even politically very active, um, I think uh, his actions have uh, embarrassed uh, that government. But uh, I don't know the kind of, um, although Nigeria has uh, tried to extradite him, um, I don't know the treaty they have between Finnish, uh, the Finland government and Nigeria. But uh, by ordinary agreement or cooperation between security agencies like the National uh, Intelligence Agency in Nigeria can uh, co collaborate with uh, their MBI and then maybe get him back to Nigeria to answer for 
all the all the crimes that uh, he has been accused of. Mr. Ratokwale, the allegations against Ekpa this time has to do with terrorism funding, as well as allegations that he is causing trouble, some violence in southeast Nigeria. Um, just like Mr. Macri said, he's, this is not the first time he was arrested and released by the Finnish authorities. As a matter of fact, the Finnish government in time past has raised concerns about uh, his rights as Finnish citizen. What do you think is happening this time? How big do you think these allegations are? Um, thank you again for having me. And the first thing I think I'm going to say is, um, number one, he has been arrested before. He was released. Now we are arrested again for the second time or the third time. And don't let us forget one thing. We might say he's a Nigerian, he's from the southern part. At the same time, this is a Finnish citizen. The way um, the laws over there are going to treat him will be solely different from the way the Nigerian law will definitely treat him. Don't forget everything happening to Nnamdi Kanu presently is completely um, being viewed all over the world. So the question is this, do we have a judiciary system that can be trusted if Simon Epa is actually repatriated back to Nigeria? And again, on the other hand, on what basis are they going to say they want to repatriate him? back to Nigeria. Do not forget, we're going to be having human rights lawyers and activists coming out in his defense, saying, no, you cannot deport him because he has never committed anything in Nigeria because forensically, we're yet to see proof and traces, in my own opinion, that yes, Simon Epa has actually committed a, a serious crime to our own soil in Nigeria. That is the way the law is going to see it. So it is now left for Nigerian government, the Nigerian security architecture, to come up with a blueprint plan, saying these are the things Simon Epa has done, these are the ways he's been financing, and these finances are linked directly to him. If that is not established, it is going to be a very hard one for him to be repatriated back to Nigeria. However, don't let us forget, in Finland over there, Simon Epa might probably be given just ordinary fine penalty that Hey, don't do this again. Stop it that way. And that's it. That ends it. Mr. Macri, you have been with the DSS. Perhaps you want to tell us how huge um, these allegations are. Has he really committed any crime um, that um, has um, one way or the other infringed on Nigeria's um, national security? Well, you have to uh, realize that uh, when people stay outside a country and incite you know, people inside another country, of course, it's a crime against national security. And uh, when you look at it, of what he has been doing, they sit at home, and then those who refuse to sit at home are being killed, you know, openly. And then, of course, he has never denied that he, those are his boys doing what uh, he has asked them to do. So um, you find out that, yes, these kind of crimes do happen. Um, when you look at in the in the in the prism of uh, uh, national security, uh, even radio, uh, illegal radio station. I'm, I'm sorry, I, I don't think I don't think I'm going to agree with you on this one, Mr. Dennis, because in this um, states whereby we have the seats at home, do not let us forget we have legal governors there, we have established governors there, and we have established security forces there. So the question is this: What are they doing? Mr. Macri, you want to respond to that? Why have they not been apprehended is so that, far? Is that why you don't agree with me? <laughs> no, because I'm not saying this is why I don't want to agree with you. you. Yeah, let the me point tell I'm you. trying to make is this. We have a governor, a sitting governor, no, but no, over no. time, okay. what are they um, doing? Yeah, let's, uh, let's, let's uh, look at the facts first before we think of what the governors are doing. No, when people, I, I know people who live in the eastern part of Nigeria, People who don't, on Monday, they don't, what are you doing? You are still at home? Yes, they are, they are not going to work today because today is sit at home. The people don't even listen to the governor because the governor does not even have the means of not enforcing that. Because if you don't, if you don't stay at home and you come out, people have been known to have been killed. Okay? Yes, that's so... They're talking about the powers of the governor to go and 
you know, stop these people. It's a different ball game altogether from what you're saying. I hear you, gentlemen. Allow me to come in here. Um, let us explore what has been or what is expected to be a collaboration between both countries. I want to assume that both of you agree to the extent that his actions on social media, you know, his call for funding is really an infringement on national security in Nigeria. What happens between Nigeria and Finland? For instance, earlier on in August, Finland's minister uh, for foreign affairs was here and they were, you know, alongside with other ministers, um, other Nordic counterparts, they were concerned about trade relations with Nigeria. Do you think they are under any form of obligation to have him repatriated? I know you raised issues of um, human rights concerns earlier. Ms. Oluwafemi. Um, you see, what I'm still going to say is this. Um, what we can do regarding what he's been doing on social media is simple. Cut him off the social media communication area. If we can do that and establish that with the Minister of Communication we have in Nigeria and that of the Finland, then we are heading somewhere. Somehow along the line, we seem to have allowed him to say everything he wants to say. It seems we have allowed him to incite hatred. And what we should be asking ourselves is this. What would have happened to a young man to have hated his country so much, to have this agreed, I mean, to have this bad intention or evil intention towards his own motherland, to the extent of inciting hatred, killings, and all the rest. So these are the things we need to really, really focus on and establish. Yeah. But we've not even been able to regulate social media in Nigeria. It will be difficult to regulate um, it all the way from Finland. Let's take a short break, and we'll be right back. From our director, DSS, Dennis Amakri, uh, live with us from the U.S., security expert Olua Femi Arato Kuale from London. Gentlemen, thank you for staying the course on the program. Mr. Macri, you want to respond very quickly to um, Mr. Arato Kuale's comments earlier. Yeah, what uh, Femi, Femi is saying that we should cut uh, him off uh, the social media. Uh, that's a very, very difficult thing. Um, you know, uh, freedom of expression uh, freedom of speech is allowed, and of course, these countries uh, we are we are they are not going to agree with Nigeria that hey, let's cut them off because they believe in freedom of speech, uh, freedom even Nigeria. It will be very difficult before you can do that. So uh, he is there. I think there are other measures or other avenues, you know, where they could find solution to this particular problem. Um, he cannot say that he's not part of it. Um, you cannot, of course, I know when you go to court, uh, the lawyers will come up with all their evidence-based arguments, you know, but at the same time, you know, there are, there are people that have even been arrested in Nigeria who killed people. And of course, when they were arrested, they confessed, you know, about their leader. And there are documentary evidence to show that this man has been out there, you know, inciting people to commit all kinds of things, mm -hmm. you know. But like the other part of what Femi was trying to say, I think is um, uh, where the governors don't uh, are looking emasculated, you know. I think uh, that one, they have to really, really work with the Nigerian security organizations all right. to see. Mm. Gentlemen, let us look at the security implication of what's happening now, IPOP continues to distance itself from the Finland-based agitator. He leads a faction of IPOP called Autopilot. Recall that there's also Inam Bekanu, who's been in detention since his rearrest in 2021. I'm wondering what you think, Mr. Lua Femi, about how Simon Ekpa's arrest will impact on activities of secessionist groups in Southeast Nigeria. Well, um, you see, Simon Ekpa's arrest it's not going to make so much impact because if you want to measure what impact it's going to make, let us look at what's going to happen on Monday next week. Let us start from there. You know why? He's been arrested? Fine. But the question is this. What sort of network 
we think they now have in the Southeast that is not even um, connected with Simon Nepa, which they are actually on their own doing things and, you know, committing all sorts of atrocities. So this stuff we're talking about, the issue of Simon Nepa, Namdekan, uh, seems to have gone far more than well, can be equally controlled just easily like that. So the question is this, state of emergency is not the point now. But the security architecture working well is what we should be thinking of, and which I actually agree with Mr. Dennis, who happens to be my mentor, that, hey, how do we work together? How do we, I mean, move together in one language? Because if you look at the military and the police, they are not working together. If you look at the civil defense and the police, they are not working together, let alone other junior agencies of security within that area. No one seems to be working together. So the question is, is, what is the level of trust we're going to have together to make this work? That is what we should be thinking about. Mr. Marco, what do you think? Because conversations have been rife as to who really has uh, as much influence on IPOP as we speak. Is it Inam Deghanu, who has been in custody for almost four years, uh, or Samuel Ekpa, who has been actively raising funds to finance um, uh, you know, his um, secessionist agenda, bearing in mind that he was even planning a declaration convention that should have culminated on the 3rd of December? Uh, you see, one thing is this. Uh, I don't think we are really trying to solve this problem. You know, we are not solving it. It is not uh, Simon Epa or Namdi Kano, you know. The, the major issue there is that there's a group of people in Nigeria who feel that they don't want to be part of Nigeria again, you know. And this, you know, separatist uh, agitations is not only in the East. We have even the Odudua people, you know, in the, in the West, uh, the Sunday Igbo and these people there. And even I've been hearing some people in Arewa also thinking about whether they want to move out. You know, so you find out that there are these different kinds of agitations that are going on. And I think let's forget about these personalities because they are just figureheads. If they die or they are removed, another one will come up, just like what we're doing in, uh, in the Northeast right now. You know, when uh, Boko Haram, when their leader was killed, another one came up again, in fact. In their own situation, all the leaders, about three consecutively coming up with, with the same name, you know. So um, that is not the issue. The issue is the problem and how do we solve that problem. Mm -hmm. And I think this is high time we sit back, the government should sit back and look at these agitations. Indeed. If there are things that they could do to change it or restructure Nigeria in a different way, I think that is where the solution is. Talking about solving the problem, we seem to have a history as a nation of responding to secessionist movements with force, as seen during the Biafran Civil War. Some say this approach has often aggravated the situation. Are yes. you saying there are still alternative strategies uh, for governments as we speak? Some have suggested dialogues capable of addressing the underlying grievances uh, driving these movements. There are also questions about who are the people to talk to and who are the stakeholders in this regard to hold this conversation. Mr. Macri. There are, there, are, there are different alternative means by which we can solve this problem. And uh, I can tell you, it is not, uh, we are not going to reinvent the wheel in Nigeria. Look at the United States. What is going on? The tri everybody, all the tribes in the world, are represented in the United States. And they have strong institutions, and of course, everybody fall in line to, you know, call themselves US citizens, okay? And then, of course, now you can imagine the outcome of the recent election, because it's nationhood people are thinking about, not tribalistic divisions. Look at India. I was so happy when I saw the, uh, the Prime Minister of India, Modi, uh, visit Nigeria. There are 1.4 billion people. We're only 230-something million people in Nigeria. 
you know, they have more ethnic groups in India. And what, how come they all have to, you know, come together, agree, and do what they have to do? You know, nationhood and patriotism, I think, is what is lacking mm. in the Nigerian situation. So let's, we let's, have to look at that. Indeed. Let's take this conversation to London. Um, Samuel Ekpa claims that a referendum has held and that Biafra has a population of about 50 million people. Uh, what do you suggest as we speak as regards what government must do differently uh, to identify the stakeholders, engage them, and ensure that um, there is peace in that region? And you see, thank you. Um, not that we don't have stakeholders in the southern part of the country, which is um, the Igbo land. Even I personally, myself, as I speak to you, I'm partly Igbo because my mom came from the Imo state. Area, which is um, Abachikebe, my area as well, and I'm partly Yoruba. There was a time when um, there was this um, group of people, you know, Namdekano and the rest of them. They came to London, they came to Soka, you know, there was a meeting converged over there, and I asked a simple question. Now that you want to leave Nigeria, you want to be on your own, what happens to someone like me? Who happens to be half Yoruba, half Igbo? What should I do? And, and the where next do you thing, go? oh, Femi, you shouldn't have said this, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> It became a problem. So what Mr. Dennis said, patriotism is key. Can anybody that is, that is actually born in Imo State come out and say, yes, I am from Imo State? They will look at him that no, you are Yoruba, you are not from Imo State. Can anybody born in Kano State, who is, a, who is an evil person, now say, oh, I'm from Kano State, I'm a Kano citizen? No, they will say no, lie, 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 lie. You know, things like this are things, we need a proper orientation about what patriotism is all about. Uh, so if we are ready to do this and stay together that yes we are one nigeria who are you i'm a nigerian not i'm a kind of citizen i'm bauchi i'm this and that then we're heading somewhere i'm not saying we can't have our different states because in nigeria we have 36 states plus abuja making 37 and 774 local governments come on we are a lot and we can do so much together but the question is this are we well represented with all these local governments we have in nigeria uh, we have different cultures different languages but the question is this, if we don't solve this issue, then the insecurity we have in Nigeria, we go on and on and on. Some have also said that perhaps attention is to basic human needs and being able to provide security and welfare to the average Nigerian. Do you think this is a clarion call on government to begin to address these basic issues, Mr. Macri? I think this call has been with government. Government knows it, uh, but I don't know why it is not being executed. You know, even our constitution said it. The very first section there, you know, whether the, the, the security and safety of the citizen is the fundamental objective of government. So why are we not looking at the security and safety of our people. That's the first thing we have to look at. We want to create even state police. People are, oh no, we can't have state police now. I see people come on TV and say, oh, we cannot because uh, the states cannot, some cannot pay for it, you know, and this and that and that and that. We have been, you know, governors have been pocketing security funds over the years. And all these monies, why don't you, okay, if that is the fundamental objective of government, why don't you take care of security mm. before you even go and start building roads? Take care of security first, because that's a fundamental objective of government. All right. But we we'll leave it aside and we'll go other, uh, some other places, and that is, you know, misplaced priority. Gentlemen, we have completely run out of time. I'm sure both of you agree that we can exhaust this conversation in 30 minutes. Absolutely. So we'll come back Absolutely. to it. Uluwa Femi Arato Kuale joined us live from London. Thank you so much for Thank talking so to much. us. Thank you. Dennis Amakri, former yeah. director, Department of State Security, live from the United States. Gentlemen, thank you for talking thank to you. us. Thank you. Roughly 54 years after the Biafra War, the question still remains, what does Nigeria do? to resolve the continued agitation for secession in 
the Southeast region? So that's a question that must be answered. That's our show today. Thanks for being a part of it. You can watch it again at midnight and at 6 a.m. tomorrow. I am Nifemi Ogunturi.